Welcome to District Dialogue. My name is Commissioner Henry Mitchell, and today we got an awesome guest. I must say an awesome guest. He just now came through office in November and warned the, the, the Sheriff Department, and he's gonna lead our law enforcement. And I wanna say welcome to my dear friend, and now my newly elected Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Tim Pounds, welcome. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> Now, now we, we go a, 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 not a long way back, but you probably go a longer way back with yes. me and my wife, more of my wife, you know, Novi. So, but with that, let's talk about this. Let, let's talk about, you know, th this today's uh, district dialogue. It's all about 10 pounds. Like mm -hmm. I know 10 pounds, but our viewers may yeah. not have a clue other than you are now our new sheriff. So yes. let's talk about who is 10 pounds? Who is Tim? <laughs> I was uh, born and raised here in Douglas County, Henry, and uh, started law enforcement as a child very early, very early. Really started at the city of Douglasville mm -hmm. back in uh, 1976, I believe So if I hear you correctly, you was, you was on the police department in the city, the city of, Douglas. of Douglasville. Oh, got you, got you. Who, who was the sheriff, not the sheriff, but who was the city police chief, chief at that time? Uh, Thad Miller. Get out of here. What did the sheriff father? <laughs> Sure, okay. Brother. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and, and give me I some stayed work. there two years, okay. and uh, As it a was a small agency back then. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, really yeah. wanted yeah. to grow in law enforcement, and uh, you always heard the superstore was about Earl. Okay. So I wanted to go work with the county. Okay. So I go down there and I talk to the sheriff, and he said the next opening he had, he let me know, and that's exactly what he done. He called me one day and said, "You still want the job?" I said, "Yeah." But at that time, he was going to start me in the jail. Mm -hmm. But they didn't need the, the jail. He wanted me as a patrolman, so that's oh, why I started. Because I was going to ask, did you, you know, I, I don't know how this, this whole sheriff and or police law enforcement work. You, you don't come in as a bailiff, or do you come in as a bailiff? <laughs> but you, I mean, so, so help us out to understand uh, what that, this whole makeup is. The, the sheriff's office, you come in, as a, in most cases, as a jailer, which is, Run the jail. It helps in the jail and uh, mm -hmm, take mm -hmm. care of the inmates. Got it. Normally, that's mm -hmm. how it happened. Now, you stay in there for two years, maybe two and a half years. Okay. Then you get opportunity to go to the police academy. Ah. And once you finish the police academy, and go through our field officers training, then you get a chance to get on the street and answer calls and got go from there. So, so was that police academy that you went through when you finally got on the sheriff department? Was that pretty tough? Was that just a, a basic training that I'm, see, I see? I was in the military, so I was up in Fort Benning and did my military training. So, is it something that similar to that, or what is that basic training like? Or it's kind of like they give you a touch on about everything you're gonna face in life as a police officer. They teach uh -huh. you how to drive, teach you how to talk to people, how to defend yourself. Okay. okay. Stuff such as then okay. last. Okay. Back then it was uh. 12 weeks. Okay. Took okay. 12 weeks to finish that mandate training. Got it, got it. Then once that's done, you come back and, you know, you may not know the city and the streets, so they will right. put you with a veteran officer and they will got teach it. you the areas. But since I was born in Douglas County, I already knew them anyway. Right, right, right. And, and speaking of which, so you grew up here in Douglas County. Yes, sir. Born and raised. Born and raised. I mean, you know, you got big family names like the Pounds, like the Danleys. You know, the sparks. The, the sparks, the Bowens. So talk about that family name and that family history that you got here in Douglas County. And now here you are, you know, with, with your brass looking <laughs> great as the sheriff. Uh, here, I'm, I'm, like you said, it's a big family. I got 13 sisters and brothers. <laughs> wow. And then each one of them don't have under 12 kids except me. I got four. So, uh, you know, we came, like I said, I was born in Douglas County. That's something I know is uh, Douglas County. And, uh, you know, back in the day, everybody got along with everybody. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, like you said, the Sparks and uh, Dallas. We all kind of come in there as a circle. And mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. Leonard, Homer, and we were all just raised up together as boys. And, uh, I, I knew I wanted to be a police officer at a very, very early age. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I got a big family. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time, everybody don't keep their nose clean. Somebody gonna get in trouble out of that family. I know. So That's I'll gotta one, be tough. Yeah, I'm, I make sure I obey my parents. I done uh -huh, what my uh -huh. people told okay. me to do. Okay. And uh, uh -huh. they ate me a long way than doing what they told me to do. Uh -huh. And uh, we just, as children, it was the best time I ever had in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cause back then, parents 
you know, let's spank kids like they're supposed to. And uh, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that today. I, I could see that. <laughs> I could see that. But, but, but let, let's talk about this. I, I mean, it's got to be tough to be born and raised here in Douglas County and now the sheriff. And I'm just going to go back to what you talked about with your siblings and other family members and other friends. How do you deal with that, that one somebody who you know that's your friend, that's, you, that's your guy, you're hanging out, and you're not doing the right thing. You you kind of walked the straight and narrow. I did, and and that was good. But for those who kind of got off track, how did Tim now in this position, but back then to say, guys, we can't do it that way. That's wrong. We got to do better. So how do you kind of put them in check? And now that you, in the the leader of of the law enforcement in Douglas County, how do you now you know how how do you how do you mandate that? How do you deal with that? That's got to be a unique situation for you. It is, but you know, back then, I've always had the ability to change or lead, even okay. as a child. Got it. I, I was, uh, I kept a lot of my sisters and brothers and friends out of trouble just by showing them the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Now, if you get up here where we're at today, that's still my intention, mm -hmm. is either get, to get back out here in my community, mm -hmm. teach these kids basically what I was taught them as I was a child. Got it. Stay away from trouble, mm -hmm. stay away from drugs, mm -hmm. obey your parents Got it. as kids. Got it. I'm going to get out there in that community. We're going to take our community back. Understood. We're going to put some stuff out there that ain't been out there. Now, you know, Sheriff Miller done a great job in this sheriff's mm -hmm. department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they want a reason for running for sheriff. I want to continue in the direction that he got it started in. Got it. And he done a super job. And we going to do all those saying that always do better than the one got before it. you done. And that's what my intentions are. So you're not, you're not out here to cre recreate the, the whole law enforcement wheel. You're going to enhance it and grow it and make it even better from what Sheriff Miller kind of passed the, the torch over to you now. So yeah, That's exactly right, Henry. I'm going to say it like this. I kind of started my law enforcement career as a dirt rope deputy. I really did. And I uh, had the night shift, mm -hmm. but I worked my way mm -hmm. through there. I, I didn't start as a jailer normally. Mm -hmm. I started as a patrolman. Got it. And I um, worked that patrolman. That was where you answer the house calls. Understood. And Understood. Do all that. But eventually, you know, I, I didn't want to stay there. But you got to really work to get to that top. So I started toward that top, and I worked, uh, I don't know, probably five, six years on the street as a patrolman. Then I got promoted to sergeant in okay. patrol. Okay. And I ran that patrol shift, and uh, done that for probably, I don't know, maybe three or four years, and got promoted to lieutenant in patrol. Mm -hmm. Go back then, the sheriff's office was so small and had 36 employees. Got it. So um, that was a, an accomplishment for me to <laughs> get that far that quick. But I knew who I was wanted to be, Henry, so mm -hmm. I kept climbing that ladder. I stayed there for a while. Henry, if I must say the thing like I want to say it. You know, I talked to the sheriff early, and I told him, I said, you know, this is nice, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This ain't really what my heart said in law enforcement. I got to keep going, and I done got to the limit with patrol. Understood. Yeah, Understood. so I said, you know, I'm on, I like to try something different. Okay. He said, well, uh, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to be a transport officer. Okay, okay, <laughs> so, okay. And this is talking to Sheriff Miller? Talking to Sheriff Miller. Okay. Uh, no, Sheriff Lee, Earl Lee. Earl Lee, so you're going, yeah. okay, you, okay, start, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, continue, so I, I was continue. talking to Earl Lee, and I okay. like to be a transport officer, we didn't have one. I understood. You know, if you get an inmate in Florida, mm -hmm. somebody got to go get him. We didn't have no one to go get him. You just pick the difference, so look, you go to Florida and pick up the inmate. I understood. So I wanted to start a transport unit, and that's exactly what I've done. So I ran that transport unit for, I don't know, probably two or three years. Again, Henry, I wasn't happy. I told him, I said, uh, you know, that's, that's good too, but I want to be the one to catch him for somebody else to go get. Got it. We didn't have a warrant unit either. Right, right. So he allowed me to start up a little warrant unit, okay. and uh, we worked that warrant unit for a little while in uniform. Uh huh. Went back to Earl, I said, Sheriff, look here. I think we can catch more if we wore plain clothes and drove my marked car. Then people wouldn't know who we were. Got it. So, again, we started a fugitive unit. In, in, in innovative. <laughs> go ahead, go yeah. ahead. I like this. Yes, and, yeah. uh, Kept me two plunk, kept me two uniform guys, and uh, 
myself and another guy wore plain clothes. Okay. So that way we had plain clothes go out the front door or the back door and the uniform go out the front door. Understood. And that became my pet peeve. Okay. I worked once in fugitives for a good 15 years, I know. Okay. And uh, wow. it give me honor if you come out here and commit a crime mm -hmm. and run to New York, if it's a felony great enough, I'm not going to do it in New York. Got it. You got to go back to Douglas County, you committed uh -huh. a crime out there uh -huh. in Douglas County. Well, that's the one thing I must say Early was known for. If you come out here <laughs> and you do something mischievous and, 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 and wrong, he didn't play. He you did. respected this county. You respected law enforcement. You respected the citizens here in Douglas County, and he didn't play. So, he didn't. Yeah, so I, and, I, and I, lo I loved him for that, the, all the hard work he did. It w he was tough. He was tough. And, and, and to learn from that type of leadership, it's kind of sort of where you are. But let's talk about that. It, who was before Early? Claude Abercrombie was sheriff before Early. Okay, so Claude Abercrombie. Then Early. Early. Okay. Thomas Waldron. Okay. And then Sheriff Miller. Wow. And now? Tim, Tim Pounds. Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, speaking of the Early era, uh -huh. That was a tough guy, yes. and a great guy, yes. and a super guy. Yes. And I'm not going to say this and say we're going to go back to the early days, mm -hmm. but I am going to say this. If you come out to Douglas County mm -hmm. and commit a crime, mm -hmm. you can rest for sure. We're going to catch you, and you're going to pay for that crime. Understood. Because, you know, the pay ain't come out of DA's office. We can't regulate no time. Well, and like come from Brian Fortner. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you come to Douglas County and commit a crime, you can look for us. So you, you, you're guaranteeing us you're going to protect I'm and serve? I'm guaranteeing you. Uh, if you come out here and commit uh, a crime, uh -huh. I may have to send my anti fugitive unit, but you coming back to Douglas wow. County. Wow. Good stuff. Good stuff. So let's talk about, I mean, now you've got this, the, you're leading the charge of the sheriff uh, law enforcement. So then you talked about there were 20 or 30 employees. 36. 36 employees. Now this, this, this leadership role you've taken on, uh, it's a lot bigger than just those, I mean, how many employees? 370. Wow. Wow. And, and now you got, the, the, you got your hands on all of these departments, and, and I don't know if you know them all off the top of your head. Kind of. You know, I kind of worked in all of them. I worked okay. before I re retired as captain. Okay. I ran five different divisions at the sheriff's office. Got it. I was in charge of fugitives, warrants, transport, records, and... Um, it's been so long, I forgot them all. See, I, there's a lot. Fugitives, warrants, records, transport, and civil. I ran the civil division. Got it. All five of those divisions before I retired. Wow, wow. And, and that's why you, 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 this was this was cut out and made for you. It mainly, that's the <laughs> entire shirt. Now, I, I worked investigation. Okay. I didn't like it mm -hmm. back in the day, so I really touched on every division we have mm -hmm. at the sheriff's office other than training. I never worked in training, but... Mm -hmm. uh, we got five divisions in there, so. But that good part about it, it makes you well-rounded. So you can understand whatever division or department that's having these issues or how to grow it or how to change it and how to tweak it to kind of make it better. Exactly. Because you've been there and done that. It's easier to say what not to do and what to do versus when you've been there and done that, you can say, I, I can tell you why and why not. Exactly. But, but how, how open-minded are you now that you are the sheriff and you, you know, the, the new sheriff in town, how open-minded are you with your staff and with the general public to just kind of, you know, because I can call you and embrace you and have fun with you. You know, we were just talking off set. You know, you, you're just a fun, fun guy. But I know there's a serious side of you that, that says, <laughs> you hey. You don't never see. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so how, how open-minded are you with the citizens of Douglas County and uh, for those viewers and, and, and those that come out here that you, you, you take this serious, but you, you, are open, you got an open-door policy? Exactly. That, okay. Exactly. And that's, is, uh, if you look at it the way I look at it, the open-door policy, I treat my employees the same. I don't want all of them to love coming to work, want mm -hmm. all of them to know if they got a problem, want to try to help them with their problem. Same thing with the citizen. I don't want a citizen got a problem. If he sees something out there, mm -hmm. he ain't nothing too small mm -hmm. and nothing too low. We need to know about it. Right. And if you got a problem with you can always come to the sheriff's office and sit down. We're going to talk about it. And if we can fix it, we're going to fix it. If we can't fix it, that's where we got to leave. At least we, we try. Something you can be able to fix through the sheriff's department, Something you can't. Understood. Understood.
But so, um, so, so what what programs and new? Because I'm I'm a pro, I like to invest in programs. I mean, I gotta say, and, and Sheriff Miller and others know, I wasn't a proponent for the nice big Taj Mahal jail. Yeah. But we got it, yeah. and that train has left the station. However, I, I ask, and, and, and even then, back before we got the Taj Mahal jail, I, I ask that we take 10% of that 100 plus million dollars, give it to me, and let's create programs, which now the Board of Commissioners and the judges and others are creating these nice programs to help us with, with those unique situations that we encounter versus just locking them up. Uh, so I'm just, I never was that proponent in, in, in the building of the jail. However, I was the proponent of saying, uh, advocating we need to create programs. So what programs, must I add, that, that you got in mind that you'll like to see that, that we can put boots on the ground and deal with our youth, uh, deal with that millennial to help them that, you know, they make mistakes. Uh, I was instrumental in, in with the city in youth against violence when I was on the city council. What programs do you envision or see that you're going to put those types of boots on the ground that will help the citizens of Douglas County and not just lock them up and throw away the key, as they yes, yes. so put it? Okay. Henry, we are in the middle of a program. My number one thing as sheriff is mm -hmm. to take care of the children. We are starting a mentor program. Okay. And it's kind of like a huge umbrella that this thing would be under. Mm -hmm. We're going to have some um, trying to start an after class session for the children, some uh, okay. assisting with the homework if necessary. Okay, okay. And um, it's all about the, the, the children. Get back in that community, mm -hmm. teach these kids the things that they don't normally do. Because Henry, it's so easy for a child. Or, Anyone else? I say anything mm -hmm. under 16 years, 17 years old. You know, y'all go to a little party, which everybody had party. We had them back when we was kids. But if you get to drinking or uh, smoking weed, to that effect, mm -hmm. something may go wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Henry, that's if it becomes a felony mm -hmm. from the action that they caused. Mm -hmm. They're still a kid, but that felony will never I know. ever I know. go. Away. Right. See, that's the kind of stuff we got to eliminate. We're mm -hmm. going to teach classes on stuff such as that, mm -hmm. but the parents has got to be aboard too. Understood. They got to help us because, see, really, Henry, it started home. Yes. It yes. started home. Mm -hmm. But if you look out today, and they don't even take the trash out no more, they don't even wash dishes no more. They don't have right. chores such as you and I did. Yeah, right. So you got to. Yeah. Get something on their mind. So, so you, you're going to go back into the community because right. I know, like Brian Fortner, I love him. That's my, my that's my DA. Uh, he he he's creating all these programs where he talks to kids and the youth at the high school level and or younger about creating when you create or create these types of crimes that how they affect your exactly. life. Exactly, that's you know, part of mine. Yeah. So, so we're trying to talk about those things that exist, that if you do this, this, the, this is the repercussions and the consequences that you'll, in, that you'll encounter. So you need to stay away from these types of things. Stay away from those types of kids who want to be out there burglarizing cars and homes and hurting people and harming people. So good stuff so it's good to know that you got an interest in the yes. community because you know I'm a, I'm a community activist even though I'm on the board one of the board of commissioners I'm a community activist and I want to make sure that we at least create the programs because I think our kids are are good they just have a unique way of oh, growing sure. up so and, and and that whole process we've got to help them with things that would get them give them a chance whether yes, it's a second yes. third or fourth chance but we got to give them a chance that we believe in them and, and, and build their confidence that we as uh, uh, citizens of Douglas County and, and commissioners and mayors and pol police chiefs and, and sheriffs that we believe in you guys. So yeah. we're gonna help you by saying you made a mistake. Exactly. Here's the program we're gonna let you go through to let you understand that you made a mistake and do understand. And I'm, I, this is keeping it 100. There are some that will not get it. Those are the ones that got to go to that Yes, that's my that, right, 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 right. <laughs> right, right. But you know, I've been out in the community. I ain't been sure if that long, but I've been out in the community. Henry, it's a, I call it a circle. Mm -hmm. Henry, we got to get, as you said, mm -hmm. the DA's office aboard, mm -hmm. police department aboard. Mm -hmm. Well, I've been doing it, going around talking to business, just see if there's something that they can do employment-wise. Yes. And I also want to talk to the bankers. Uh -huh. 
I want the bankers to teach these kids at an early age how to save money. Right. How to go right. out and get that job and actually save a little money. If you start saving money at 16, yes. time you get 21 years old, right. 21, you may have enough See. to buy a car. Yeah. But just talking to these businesses, just saying if they got some for them in the evening when they get out of school, because you know, we got to keep some in their hand. Yeah. That See, phone is our worst enemy. See, that's you're absolutely right. See, when I was growing up, we, we had, I mean, I played basketball, football. I went to the Boys and Girls Club. We, there, was all, there was a Boys and Girls Club and or a youth center at every corner. Yeah. So you had a, a ton of things to do. Yes. Now I think, you know, uh, we've eliminated a lot of things for these guys to do, the, our youth. And That's now, right. you know, an idle mind, and I don't know this whole cliche, but an idle mind kind of idle get, sometimes gets you in trouble. Because you got too much Most time. Most of the time, okay, all right, okay. You in trouble. So, so that's, the, and I'm glad to hear that you're doing that. So, let, let me go back to ask another quick thing. And I know our viewing audience probably know this, and you know this for, firsthand with all the things that you, as an officer, are, are dealing with. Community don't trust you. Um, uh, you know, uh, the bad officer who's doing the wrong things. How would you address that, or how do you plan to address that to, to reassure the viewers and, and the citizens of Douglas County that that's not going to be tolerated even in your department? So don't, not saying with those citizens who have done wrong, but I'm talking about in your department that you're leading the charge. When those guys kind of pop up and, you know, they're supposedly doing the right thing, protect and serve, but they're doing the wrong thing as an officer. How are you going to address those types of things? Those kinds is out the door, and I okay. said to say this, there's a professional level. Uh -huh that we all must mm -hmm. remain on that level. Now, you know, you stop someone out there for speed or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. quite naturally, they're going to be upset, they're going to be mad, they may scream, they may cuss, they mm -hmm. may mm -hmm. they can do everything except put their hands on it. I understand. You got to be able to tolerate that. You got a level. You got to remain known, which mm -hmm. is professional. They cuss, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, I understand. Just keep doing what you got to do. Right. Don't ever get on their level. Got now, it. you remain professional. They put their hands on, that's a different story. But if I got an officer, mm -hmm. see all our calls equipped with audio and video. Got it. So all somebody got to do is say he said, she said, mm -hmm. we can play the tape. We got can it. see. Got it. And we will do that. And if we catch officers doing that, there ain't no room for them in Douglas County. We're going to lead this county mm -hmm. in a professional way. And if we get the officers back out here in the neighborhoods, mm -hmm. talking to these children, find out they need anything, mm -hmm. they ain't stop and shoot a basketball or two with them, just let them know I ain't the bad guy. Understood. I'm here to help everyone. Understood. Understood. You got to stay inside the law. Other than that, I ain't, I ain't the bad guy. And, and let me thank you and, and even Sheriff Miller <clears throat> on his way out that I know uh, me, the Board of Commissioners and myself, and, and, and I led the charge on this body camera because I felt like we needed them. And I know we, we kind of understood that there are different laws that regulate the body cameras, what you can and can't do, walking into a, a, a somebody's home and so on and so forth. But thank, thank you to Sheriff Miller and to yourself to continuing that charge of body cameras, which I think is going to be a huge asset. I do too. To, to your team and, and assuring and making sure that what they did was correct and what the general public did was correct as well. So it, it protects both sides. Exactly. So thank you for kind of continuing that effort. And, and it don't lie. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I think it's one of the greatest tools we ever come up with it by the camera simply because, mm -hmm. it's like I said, you really got first-hand knowledge of what really did happen. Understood. You, and, and like I said, sometimes officers may not he may not be the officer we think he are. So that body camera tell on whoever need to be told on, whether it's mm -hmm. my officer mm -hmm. or the public. Right. So I like that body cam. Okay. Okay. Well, good. So now we're gonna we're gonna add to it because I, I know it. I, I put a, we set aside some funds for that. I think I'm guessing at this number about two hundred fifty thousand, and it may. I know you need a ton more, but will you will you make that in, that other investment, whether it's drug funds or, or come to us asking and requesting for even you more funds? You take it to the bank. <laughs> okay, all right. All right. Okay. 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 Because I I really believe that that is the the way to to, to build the confidence in the community that and bridge that, that gap back yes and that and it shows that everybody is is playing by the rules right you know? right because i'm a firm believer in you know everybody play by the same rules uh, everybody got to play okay. by the same rule you got to do it right you know i know that's where i was raised you got to do it right in the beginning okay good okay We're everybody change. make mistakes oh, though, but all up to your mistake understood Let, let's talk a little bit more about sheriff uh, pounds Mm -hmm. We talked about who Sheriff Pounds is. What, what, is a, what is a normal day 
for <laughs> for sheer pounds. I mean, just just keeping it one hundred. I mean, do you, you you go fishing? Do you you kind of do you eat chicken and fries? I mean, what what is it? I mean, they, they they look at some of you guys as y'all on this 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 pedestal of like you know untouchable. But you guys are you go to Kroger and shop as well, don't you? Exactly. <laughs> Okay, yeah. all right. Okay. But uh, I know I'm get to work about 7.30 and okay. probably leave about 7.30 because, okay. uh, you know, I'm getting a feeling of myself and <laughs> right, everybody right, right. want this, everybody want that, and um, I leave, go eat a nice lunch and come back uh -huh. there because there's so many things that we're trying to implement okay. that it just take the whole entire, my staff, right. getting it rid of this throw it out there to the public. This is what we're going to do. This right, is what I right, promise, and right. this is what we're going to do. So we're working on the program you spoke about earlier. How can the sheriff's department enforce the law but still be a help to our uh, community? But my question, though, is when you let your hair down with you and your significant other, what is it that you, what is it that you guys do when you're saying, you know what, I'm not, my sheriff hat is, it's at the house on the, on the, on the table. I'm, a, I'm right now out there doing what I do, what I enjoy doing. Well, I don't that? play golf here. I don't know how to play golf. I ain't interested in learning how to play golf. Okay, okay. I love to fish. Okay, I love okay, to fish. Okay, but okay. And normally, during the, if it's time to fish, mm -hmm. I will fish my little days off, and on a Saturday is my favorite time to fish. Okay, okay. Other than that, on the 27th of May, uh -huh. all that will change. Oh, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. And, and what is that? I'm going to get married on that day. <laughs> So then I will no longer be the boss, and she'll run that household, and I'll run the sheriff's office. <laughs> right, right, right. I got it, I got it. Well, that's all right. Well, first of all, thanks for making that announcement to the yeah. general viewing audience that that's kind of your plans, and I wish you guys the best. And I, I guess I should ask, because you, you're such a fun, I mean, you're a big guy, <laughs> but you're, you're fun, you're playful, you have fun, and, and I'm just trying to see, you know, who could that, that significant other be that could, tolerate all this joyfulness in you. <laughs> so, wow. So, whomever that might be, I mean, you'll, you'll say whoever that is, she know who she is. Congratulations. And uh, I don't know how much you're gonna, how you're gonna put up with this big teddy bear, but, <laughs> but enjoy it. But yeah, I mean, I, I wish you guys the best and, and hope that, um, you know, there's a great future ahead of you. Uh, now, how long do you plan to do this? I mean, uh, 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 will you retire? This, this is it for you? As long okay. as the people will have me. Got it. And I'm intending to do exactly what I said I was going to do. Okay. We're going to keep Douglas County a safe place to live, work, and play. That's my goal. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, so, and, and I, we give it a wrap it up. I know this has been a long conversation, but how is it working with the city, which is the police chief, Sparks, and you? I know you guys grew up together, mm -hmm. and, and he's another big guy that, you know, just a big teddy bear. But at the end of the day, how is that, how do you guys bridge the gap between the city and the county to reassure the citizens of Douglas County it's not about a, it's not a turf war it's mm -hmm. about the citizens of Douglasville and Douglas County yes that's uh gear and I go so far back we even had the same street name <laughs> I'm Goober and he's Goober <laughs> ah, but I'm I originally Goober because I was born first his dad <laughs> and my dad was running mates okay. and uh okay. so you know me and Gear go back from just child from kids all the way up to where we are now. Okay. And I think it's one of the greatest things that ever happened that I can, because you know, back in the day when we were sheriff, he taught us to not like the city. Understood. So it was a grief all the way between the city and the county. They Got couldn't it. come here and they couldn't come there. Miss Parks ain't gonna do it like that. We're gonna work hand in hand and as a team, mm -hmm. we're gonna put some stuff together that's mm -hmm. gonna benefit Douglas County and the city of Douglasville. Understood. Because uh, as important. Sparks say, working as one. Yes. So I can go to him and tell him, you know, some areas that he need to touch in. He can come to me and tell me some areas I need to touch in. We're going to form some teams. Understood. Like a drug task force. Mm -hmm. We're going we're gonna to get it. It's going to be love and folks are going to be able Understood. to see it. Understood. But now I don't want no one out there to get our love twisted. Mm -hmm. We're going to enforce the law and mm -hmm. we're going to make it better. And he, he makes sure he make it known. As far yeah. as we, we get it, you know, so. But but that that's good because I, I know you know they even speak from the, from the, the 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 governmental side of it that you know the board of commissioners and the the mayor and the council members you know we're always at odds we're not no. I, I think we've got one of the best mayor and city council I do too and now new uh, chairman and 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 board of commissioners that probably ever exist in the state of Georgia and speaking of that you know we already got some things together. Mm -hmm. 
we got what we call a major crime unit. Okay. okay. And that unit consists of three from the city, mm -hmm. and every how many I got on, I think it's a total of about 10 on there. That's, in other words, that unit works every major crime, whether it happened in the city mm -hmm. or whether it happened in the county. We got a murder over on Cockwood Street, that major case, which is made up with the city investigators, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my investigators, they work that together. And, uh, you know, we got the fine unit. That, that's our team. City got three units out there. Got it. I got three out there. The black car you see on the interstate. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, yes. Three of those belong to Spark, mm -hmm. three of them belong to me. So it's already a team effort Good. going. Good, good. And I like to see, you know, when him and I talked about it, it's um, much larger than our college squad than we have. Mm -hmm. Maybe put mm -hmm. all together. I don't mm -hmm. know what we're going to do, but we're going to sniff out some of these drug Understood. areas. Understood. Understood. Well, well, let me first of all say thank you. And, and thank you for giving me this much time with you. I mean, oh, I know, quite welcome, I, I mean, you know, so um, I, I just want to speak to you and let you speak your heart and let people get to really know who is Sheriff Pounds so they can really get to, no, and you spoke of your four kids. You want to acknowledge your four kids so, so we'll know, because when I see them around town, I want to make sure I say, mm -hmm. okay, I know your dad, you know, <laughs> you, you're good. Henry, you probably won't get to see him around the time. My son was an investigator for Cobb County PD for many years, okay. and he woke up one day and said, Dad, I don't want to be the police no more, so we quit and went to Afghanistan. That's been six years ago. Wow. My oldest daughter is a school teacher. She lives in Ohio, got, wow. uh, got three grands. Mm -hmm. And so my baby part. girl was a Marine. Okay, uh-huh. She moved to Alabama, and uh, the only one I got in Georgia is Ashley. Okay. And she lives in Marietta. Got it. Got so it. you probably won't get to see him running around here in this street, but I got four beautiful kids. I got four good kids. Understood. But I didn't mind putting that bet on like I was telling <laughs> what other folks can do <laughs> back in the day. Right, right. That, that, see, but, but I know then if they, if they kind of look at it, we all, we all would probably be in jail, you know, based on, on, on what that is. However, but, but that... that uh, that's what we got to be able to distinguish between the two. Let me tell you. Uh, abuse and or. Exactly. Uh, and correction. Now, abuse, you can't take a two that's before exactly. and hit none of your kids. You can't do stuff like that. Well, I don't know. My mom kind of took a couple of things. I said, wait a minute now, mom. <laughs> but but go ahead. you can take a belt and spank your child. Okay. You, you, can, you can correct your child. Okay. It starts with you. The yeah. Bible tells you you can do that. Okay. Spare you know, the like, rod, spoil the child. All right, but you okay. can't. Try to kill him. No, ain't, no. You ain't the judge and the jury. You got <laughs> no, to I agree, just I agree. teach him right from wrong. Yes. And but that sometimes take a belt to do that. Henry. Understood. Understood. And, and I think there's a right way of doing that. Yes. You know, I just, I'm only saying that, Mom, I know you kind of, you know, kind of went over the top a couple of times, <laughs> but I, I'm still here. I'm still here, and you, and you did well. But at the end of the day, I, I, I think... I don't think, I know we truly get it. There is a right way of correcting your child. Exactly. And there is a wrong way, because there, there's that .001% that I speak of that do it the wrong way. Yeah. But they, they set the rules and, and, and the bar as to what we can and can't do now because of what they did wrong for those who are doing it right. Exactly. And we, you know, I respectfully you know, disagree with that 1%. But I have to respect it because the law now is set this way to kind of reassure that the kids are safe. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of parents out there actually afraid mm -hmm. of discipline mm -hmm. their children. It, they, and that's a mess I like to get out and uh, make them understand. Mm -hmm. You can still discipline your child. Mm -hmm. Like you said, that's the correct way to do it. Okay, okay. Well, I, and I agree. So we're going to wrap this up. That. Yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. But I, I will add, and just telling our viewing audience, that coming up in the future, that um, speaking with Wes and myself, part of the uh, programming committee, that we're going to set up a show, that we're going to look down the road and talk. So you'll be a chance to sit here with our viewing audience on, on TV23 and talk about some things that you got going on, any big events. Uh, we're going to be on the road with you and, 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 and show and tell what actually happens in your department, in law enforcement. We're going to show you the right way, and we're going to show you the wrong way. Yes. And you're going to be leading that charge. So just FYI, guys, coming future, the future uh, programming coming to uh, TV23, uh, Share Pounds will have a, a segment. Uh, we haven't decided the name and how long it will be and what it will entail, but it will be about your department, correct? Yes, and that's... Uh that's what I want. I want the folks to know uh -huh. what we're doing. They can come to roll call. Uh -huh. We still have that citizen law enforcement academy. Got it. That way the, the people come, they actually go through the academy, they get a chance to see what we do every day and all day. 
And believe it, Henry, if you actually had opportunity mm -hmm. to ride with one of my deputies, mm -hmm. you have a different opinion about the police. Yes. Or you will actually get opportunities to see firsthand, firsthand yes. some of the things they do. You know, something they do is so dangerous, they got but a split second to make oh, that yes. decision. Oh, yes. So it's, I want people to be able to see that. That's why we kept that Citizen Academy going so you can actually still go through it. I, I'll share with you, I know a couple of people, Barbara Smith, one of them, who talks highly about that academy, how, how much she enjoy it and all the things it showed and taught to her, taught her as to what you guys do and don't do. And, and so she, she talks highly about you guys. Yeah, and when Barbara Smith talks highly <laughs> about you guys, you're good. <laughs> you that's, got that? That's, that's, one, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but again, okay, so let's wrap this up. Thank you again for, for, uh, for hanging out with me. And, and you so welcome. We need to do this often and then have and some will. true conversation with people like yourself who's leading that law enforcement charge. Thank you for just, you know, taking ownership and wanting to lead the law enforcement department because I think that's so important and it takes a special person to do this. Everybody who wants to be the sheriff, who wants to do this, is not cut out to do this. Exactly. It takes a special person. So I, 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 I want to say thank you for at least, uh, and, and thank you to your kids and, and, and your future uh, fiance that you, you're looking at this you know, seriously about what you expect and from your department, what you're willing to give the citizens of Douglas County, and, 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 and I commend you on that. So are there any closing uh, statements that you'd like to make and, and, and say to us and the viewing audience that you know you want to share before we kind of wrap this thing up and call it a day? Yes, I haven't had opportunities to think my entire campaign group, okay. my family, mm -hmm. and the peoples that assisted me in getting here. It was a long, drawn-out process, but I made it, and, I, and it's, it just feels so good to be able to sit here and say that, mm -hmm. and planning on doing exactly what I ran on. I don't like to talk to hear myself talking. Right. Got to implement them plans so people can see mm -hmm. that I did what I said I was going to do. Mm -hmm. But the main thing, just thank everybody. And it's just, I thank you because I worked, uh, I started this thing 40 years ago trying right. to get to where I'm at and finally see. I made it. But the people can't stop there. Everybody that assisted me in getting here mm -hmm. is still on that same team. And I ain't talking about the campaign team. I understand. My citizen of Douglas County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They the one that actually got, got it here. So. They got to keep it up. Understood. You come to that office. They got a problem. Sit down. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Need some kind of advice? Call me. Let's talk about it. I got to keep my team, which I call my citizen, mm -hmm. on my team. Understood. And, and the good part about it, see, and I can hear that in your heart and in your voice, that you want to be held accountable. Yeah, and, I, and all my officers are going to be held accountable. Understood. Understood. And, and that's what I hear, hear you saying, and, and I agree. We can't just elect uh, uh, sheriff pounds yes. and leave and, and go on to the next situation. You gotta, you gotta, like you said, tell me what you hear and see the situations that are going on, because uh, you can't cover Douglas County all by yourself. That's right. I need you need the eyes of the citizens of Douglas County, and and the city, to share with you when they see these types of crimes going on. Know your neighbors. Yes. You know, know your neighbors. Um, know your neighbors so that if by chance you see some kids going in out of a, out of this particular house, and I'm just using a hypothetical, and and you know that your next door neighbors don't have kids, so there there's a potential yes. problem. Yes. They, exactly. they could be That's at that I time mean. burglarizing that particular house. But if you sit back and, and pull your shutters down and close your door and not really talk about what's really going on in your neighborhood, then you can't really help them. Here in the whole county needs to be a neighborhood watch. Got it. Everybody needs to be aboard. Like you said, see, ain't no crime too small for us. Right. Mm -hmm. And ain't nothing that we're going to feel bad about you calling the officer about. Understood. If you call us, uh -huh. Even if it ain't what you thought it was, we at least need to come out and look at it. Understood. And, and make sure that it's not, you know, crime going on at that particular time. So, well, you talking pounds. about being held accountable? Yes. You know how they say they sweep things on the rug? Uh -huh. You know, I took up all the rugs. <laughs> we ain't gonna, ain't gonna be no sweeping nothing under the rug. If, I'm gonna hold them in myself uh -huh. accountable for what we do out here in the street. Thank you. I got to bridge that gap back. Our people's got to understand that we ain't out to harm them. We got to do a job, and that's what we're going to do. And you, you, you're going to protect and serve. That's exactly right. Thank you. 
pounds. We really appreciate it. And, 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 and again, I, I'm just honored to sit here with you and, and a man of your stature, a man of your caliber and all the things you've done for 40 plus years that, that you're willing to take the leadership role of our law enforcement here in Douglas County. So once again, thank you for hanging out with me here at, in District Dialogue. And again, for those of you who, I mean, just wanna find out more about Sheriff Pounds, you can go to the website, you can call him. He's, come see me. Yeah, come see him. I mean, he's got a nice Taj Mahal jail <laughs> that you can come by and knock on the door and, and, and request a, to, a, a visit with him. Yes. And talk about your neighborhood. Talk yes. about your neighborhood watch. Talk yeah. about the situation that you notice that's coming in your neighborhood. Don't allow it to be swept under the rug. Let's talk about it. And, and the rugs. Because uh, so, so, he's already <laughs> said he's taking away all the rugs. That's so right. again, thank you. And for those of you who've been viewing this program, thank you for, for being a part of District Dialogue. Again, thank you to my guest, uh, Sheriff Pounds. And we want to wish you the, the most in success for 120 years down the road. So when you're with your walker, you're still our sheriff. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to we're gonna take it in for you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again. And for you who are viewing, thank you again for being a part of District Dialogue. My name is Commissioner Mitchell, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.